Hey friends, it's Jessica from Three Rivers Homestead and I'm here for the last video of the Three Rivers Challenge for 2022. If you don't know what the Three Rivers Challenge is, check out the hashtag in the description and that will show you videos from everybody else who was participating in it this year here on YouTube. It's a pantry challenge in which the goals are to just eat from your food storage um, for whatever duration of the challenge you choose to participate. And the goals in doing that are to um, cycle through food in your food storage that needs to be used up before it goes bad, make room for this year's um, food that will be harvested during the growing season, to save money, of course, and to maybe learn some creative ways to use up some of the food. And um, for me personally, every year I do this, which it's the fifth year that I've done this challenge, I learn where there are holes in my food storage situation things that maybe I don't keep enough of in our house to get us through some kind of emergency where we were forced to eat from our food stores. And so every year we just kind of get a little more prepared. And I that definitely was the case this year. I learned a lot from it. And at the end of this video, I will share you kind of um, what I learned during this year in the challenge and things that I'll change for next year, um, some stuff like that. So um, in this video, I'm going to go ahead and do what I have been doing. I'll kind of take you through the week and what we were doing in the kitchen. There's some other projects uh, mixed in there. We started working on planting some more seeds, and I'll take you along and kind of talk to you about where we are at with that. And then at the end of this video, if you stick around, I'll show you the first um, grocery shopping trip that we did after the pantry challenge. Yesterday, we went ahead and um, went to local grocery stores. We went to Aldi. Walmart and Sam's Club after two months of no shopping um, and I'll show you what we decided to buy remember that that's only half of our grocery budget the, the majority of our grocery budget is spent through Azure Standard you can learn about them in the description as well um, we buy a lot of bulk food for our family and that order will not be placed for a couple more weeks so um, anyways let's go ahead and get on with this week's video and I'll show you what we were able to accomplish this week Alright guys, as usual, I'm sitting down on Sunday and making my meal plan for the week. I've shown you my planner in videos before and how I've set this up. So if you want to know more about that, check out the link in the description. But basically, I sit down every Sunday night and I just kind of make a plan for the week. This is the only way that I can accomplish cooking from scratch for my large family while wearing all the other hats I wear, like homeschooling and gardening and canning. I just I have to have a plan. And so this was this week's plan. It feels good on Sunday night to know what to expect for the week. And I can just sit back and relax and head into the week. One of our family's traditions on Sunday nights is to make popcorn. And I wanted to show you, this is another great use for your bacon fat. If you make bacon and you save the fat from that, if you're dairy-free and you can't have butter on your popcorn, it sounds crazy, but if you cook your popcorn in the bacon grease, it is delicious. We get our popcorn in bulk from Azure Standard and use a multicolored popcorn. And every Sunday night, we watch America's Funniest Videos together and eat that. The baby eats some dehydrated blueberry, I'm sorry, freeze-dried blueberries because we don't feel safe giving him the popcorn. And then some of us like to have nutritional yeast on top of the popcorn. It gives it a delicious cheesy flavor. So that is what we're having tonight as a treat. Okay, and you guys can see the empty jars are starting to accumulate. And I don't want too many of these to accumulate. Um, and they're all over my counter, so I'm going to fill some up. We're doing some dried beans today. And I also grabbed some apples that were starting to go soft in our overflow fridge. And I'm cooking those down in the crock pot and we're going to make applesauce. So I've mentioned before that my rule is that whenever six empty, or I'm sorry, seven empty quart jars accumulate on my counter, I try to fill them back up with something. And I do this usually until... Uh, gardening season gets so busy that I don't have the time to do the canning projects anymore. And that's the perfect time to stop because at that point I'm really busy. I don't have time to do canning. I don't have time to cook meals from scratch because I'm in the garden for hours and hours every day. And so if I have a lot of um, dried beans and meat 
and broth and things like that canned up, and I do this during the winter, it makes that really busy gardening um, season in the spring that much easier. And so that's the point that I stop because at some point I have to stop canning to let the jars kind of empty out and to make space then for what we're going to preserve. And so if I stop usually in um, April, maybe the beginning of April, then we will have enough jars emptied by, let's say, late July is when I really start um, canning again. Um, that gives me several months to empty jars and then we'll be ready for canning season. So today I'm trying out, I'm testing some new lids that were sent to me by a company called Four Jars. And these lids um, are cheaper than the ball canning lids and the care lids that I can find in the store. And so I decided to test these out um, this week and I'm going to let you know how I like them. This is the company Four Jars. And as I mentioned, they sent me these lids for free to try. And if they work out well, I'm going to give you guys a link or a, a coupon code that you can use to save some money on some canning lids. So let me try these and I'll let you know how it worked. So getting my lids ready on these canned beans. And my goal this week was to do some beans, some applesauce, some broth and some meat. Those are the main things that I can through the winter because I usually have apples to use up. I have bags of peaches and pears when I get kind of tired during the season where I'm canning those um, in the fall. And so I just put them in the freezer and then I, I tackle those in winter when things are a little slower. So that was my canning project for the day and all of them sealed. Uh, these two batches, those jars, um, the, the lids sealed. So I'm going to try a couple more badges, batches before I give my thumbs up on these lids and then I'll let you know how it goes. So right now I'm doing some broth. As you can see, someone, so now that we moved the couch to that spot, is enjoying climbing on the furniture. I'm going to have to get on him for that. <laughs> but I'm just getting this broth in my jars. This was some ham broth that was left over from some bones um, from some roast that I had cooked. And so I just threw the bones back into the crock pot, added some water. The, those roasts were cooked with peach salsa, and I just left that salsa in there with it and it gave a delicious flavor to this broth. So those will be a nice addition to some soups and rice and things. All right, I'll get these in the canner. I'll let you know how those lids seal up after they finish. Now we need to get some grains ground. I did some corn for some cornmeal and I did some wheat berries. I did some soft wheat and some hard wheat for this week's baking. Today I'm going to make some calzones for the kids. So I need to use my pizza crust recipe to make my crusts and this recipe is what we use for all of our pizza and calzones. It makes a wonderful crust and so I've got my yeast activating and then someone is getting a little bit of I guess sensory play here. <laughs> He's enjoying scooping up the flour and just kind of playing with it. I'm letting him make a mess because it is keeping him happy while I'm working in the kitchen. And that is the goal. And don't worry, he's safe up there. I'm right next to him, keeping an eye on him. <laughs> all right, so we're getting our yeast activated. The next step is to add all of our other ingredients. I added all those and I usually add oregano and onion powder to my pizza dough. It gives it a good extra flavor and we really enjoy that. So we're going to get this in the mixer and I'll show you what that looks like later. Now I'm working on my pizza sauce. I have my honey, um, garlic scape powder, oregano, and salt all here in my dish. And then I'm gonna add these two jars of tomato paste. I get these in bulk also from Azure Standard. And then I'm gonna add some pickled vegetable juice. It just has that vinegary, spicy garlic and cayenne flavor. And this is what our pizza sauce looks like when we get that all mixed together. All right, but let me show you how that dough mixed together. This is what it looks like. We are using hard red wheat berries for this and it definitely gives a denser texture than we're used to when we use pre-ground flour, but it still makes a delicious crust. So we're getting ready to do that. Right now the beans are up to pressure. That's exciting. And I've got my sausage um, thawing and cooking up for the calzones. Let me show you the toppings that we have. We have some thawed green peppers and some like banana peppers. There's some pickled okra I chopped up, black olives, 
Those were some pickled cayennes, and then we have some pickled garlic also, and then of course anchovies, because my kids love anchovies. So the kids are kind of just picking whatever toppings they want to have, and then I'm gonna use these. These are um, stamps. They're meant for stamping like garden stones and things if you wanna put words in them, but I bought these and I use them exclusively for baking. So I need to stamp the kids' names on the top of their calzone so that I know whose is whose because otherwise when it's all wrapped up, you have no idea what is inside each of them. So the kids pick their toppings and then we just flip the dough over in half like that press down the edges, and then I stamp it with the name of the child who chose those toppings. And that works really good for us. You can see one of the big boys and how they chose a little bit of everything. We'll get that folded up. And then after we bake them, that's what they looked like. I think the boys were, or the girls were gone with Adam this day. And I just had my five sons with me. So we made five calzones here. The baby can't read yet, obviously. So that is not his calzone. This shows why stamping it is important because I don't think the baby would have liked the hot peppers that were in Levi's calzone. While the kids are eating, I'm working on this last canning project that's testing out those lids that I mentioned. I grabbed some Swiss steaks and um, some other roasts and I'm just cutting these up and getting them in jars so we can do one batch of canned beef today. And I just slice and chunk up my meat and I raw pack with water and then we pressure can it for 90 minutes. So, all right, my broth is done though. So I can get that out and make room then for this meat. And once again, every single lid on this broth, um, it's sealed. So these jars or these lids are wonderful. I'm very excited about that. I'll share more about them here in a second. All right, leftover kind of bones and meat and pieces from the meat that I was canning. So I'm just gonna add this bag of um, freezer vegetable scraps. I've got some garlic that we need to use up. We're just gonna get this all in the crock pot, fill it with water, and this will be the broth that I can put in the fridge and then use for the rest of the week. So I always wanna have a crock pot of broth going at some point in the week so that we have some fresh to use up. And then here it is, guys, all of the canning that I did over that 48 hours to fill up jars and every single lid sealed. So if you want some affordable canning lids, um, I can, can't recommend these four jars lids enough. Use the discount code 3RIVERS10 and you can get 10% off of these lids. Check the link in the description to see their website. But I am so excited because sometimes um, the ball lids are really expensive in the store and sometimes we can't find them in the stores. So... These are just a wonderful option and I am very grateful that they sent these to me and I will probably be purchasing these from now on. Getting that 10% discount is really helpful so make sure you use the code. And now I'm going to work on some granola for breakfast. So I have my six cups of oats here. These are just old fashioned rolled oats. I'm going to add one cup of pumpkin seeds and one cup of slivered almonds. These are things I buy in bulk that are on my pantry shelves. We're gonna put a little bit of cinnamon and salt. I'm gonna add one cup of raw honey and one cup of coconut oil. I have this in the house to use up. We're just gonna get this all mixed together and make some granola. So what I need to do first is take the cup of honey and the cup of oil and then I'm adding my cinnamon and salt and I melted this down on the stove because obviously that coconut oil is solid at room temperature and then once I got that melted down a little bit I could pour this over the oat seed and almond mixture and get that all mixed together this is going to make a really delicious granola I took a piece of parchment paper and I spread that over my baking sheet you're going to want to do that so your granola doesn't stick and then here we go. I've mixed in the oil and honey mixture, and then you just want to thoroughly make sure that that coats every little bit of oats and seeds and nuts so that every bit has a little bit of that oil and sweetness on it. And then we're just going to dump this whole bowl onto our baking sheet here, and we're going to bake it in the oven on about 300 degrees um, until it browns a little bit. So what I do is about 10 minutes into baking, I take it out of the oven and I kind of mix it around again and flip it 
so that what's on the bottom comes to the top and vice versa. And then I stick it back in the oven for another 10 minutes and check on it. And I just keep doing that until it gets to the brownness that I want it. And so that will toast up all of those nuts and the oats. And when you're done, here you go. You get a delicious, crunchy, toasted granola. This is gonna make a wonderful breakfast cereal for my children tomorrow. Once it's cooled a little bit, I add some dried fruit. I'm adding some freeze-dried blueberries to this, getting those mixed in. You could add raisins, you can add dehydrated apple slices, whatever fruit you want. We are also going to add some craisins. I also get these in bulk from Azure. They're just some dehydrated cranberries that are lightly sweetened with apple juice. And I'm going to put those in with the granola mixture and get that all set. And then I did this the night before so that this would be ready for breakfast on the next morning. And let me show you how I serve this to my kids. So I made a batch of cashew milk as I normally do and have it sitting in the fridge. And then the kids are gonna eat this just like they would dried cereal. So they just get a bowl, they add a little bit of the cashew milk and they mix it around and they really enjoy this because we very rarely buy dried cereal in our house. We might have that maybe once a month or every other month, but this is a much healthier alternative that I am more willing <laughs> to make for them every now and then. So they really enjoyed this as a breakfast treat. Sometimes I'll make my homemade dairy-free yogurt and then we'll serve that over the top of the granola. I put the instructions for making granola in last week's video, or I'm sorry, for making the yogurt in last week's video. So check that out if you didn't see it. And it gets the thumbs up from John John. <laughs> All right, and so while Elizabeth is finishing up her granola, I'm just slicing up the last of the lemons. They're starting to go soft, our fresh lemons. So I'm getting these in the freeze dryer today. Okay, quick lunch, it's Taco Tuesday, and I've got some rice cooking, and I need to use up this corn relish from two years ago. It's just sitting on the shelf, and I wanna use it. So this is a great addition to our rice. It has a really sweet vinegar flavor that really um, gives that rice you know, a good taste. So there's a little bit of hot pepper in it, the corn, the sweetness. I think this will go great with our meal today. We're making taco bowls instead of regular tacos. So I've got my ground beef, our homegrown ground beef cooking, adding my taco seasonings. I'm gonna add the last of these frozen green peppers to the meat and get those all cooked into it. And then we're basically just gonna serve taco bowls. We're gonna take our meat and we're gonna put it over the rice mixture that I just created. So that's what it looks like when it's all done. We have some toppings that the kids can choose from when they make their little taco bowls. Let me show you the options that they have. We had just a little bit of black olive that was left in the fridge, so I sliced that up, and I had some pickled cayenne peppers from a jar that needed used up. We have some home canned salsa here. These are some more pickled vegetables, and then I have peach hot sauce. So each kid can just kind of pick what they want to put in their bowl, and that will be lunch for today. We are out of masa flour. I had planned on uh, making some, but life got busy and I wasn't able to make my homemade masa yet, so I'll have to do that in a future video for you guys. And so since we didn't have any taco shells available, this was how I was making it work during a pantry challenge. We'll just make somewhat of a taco bowl with the taco seasoned meat and some rice, and you know what? It got the job done. It satisfied the kids. A quick lunch that we can eat. All right, I think they're enjoying it. Let's move on to the next breakfast that we made. So just another egg casserole. You know, I love using my veggie powder and potatoes in my egg casserole. And then just a side of some home canned peach sauce. It's just like applesauce, but made with peaches. And we're just gonna serve this up to the kids. A little bit of protein, a little bit of fruit for breakfast. And I think it will make my little boys happy here. So I like to serve my fruit sauce in mugs with a spoon. It's much easier for the little kids to eat it out of a mug than a big bowl for some reason. That's just a good portion size for them and an easy way for them to eat it. So we're really enjoying having this little table over here for the boys, as you can see. And all the kids wanted matching PJs last night. I thought that was cute. All right, guys, as I mentioned, it's gardening season. Today we're gonna work on planting some asparagus. 
and then I'm experimenting with planting some spinach earlier this year to see if I have better results with the spinach bolting. So I had a big, beautiful patch of asparagus that was all established. I had planted it probably five years ago. And then um, about a year and a half ago, my male dog, Tom, decided to dig the whole patch up. Now there might be some random spots here and there that aren't completely dug up, but, um, and I'll try to transplant some of those established plants to my garden beds this year, but we're gonna start over now. We're planting some asparagus from seed. And unfortunately, asparagus is one of those plants that you have to be patient. You don't harvest it until about year three. That's when you can start getting a harvest from that. So um, I've learned that anything I want to grow and not be destroyed by either rabbits or dogs needs to be planted inside my garden fence. So that's what we're doing. And this year I am transitioning my entire garden to raised beds. And I can't wait to take you guys along on that process. So if you remember last year, I had a terrible problem with voles tunneling under and eating my any bean seeds I planted or anything. They just destroyed them. So I'm hoping that by switching over to raised beds, I can put some hardware cloth, some mesh kind of on the bottom of the raised beds, and that will prevent the voles from tunneling through and getting to my plants. So I got my seeds all ready. I am in planting mode. I'm so ready for spring here. So, so far we have planted, um, what have we planted? Peppers, and I'll show you in a minute how those are doing. We planted onions, and I, those have yet to germinate. I'm still waiting. They were planted about seven days ago. And then today, obviously, we're doing the asparagus. The reason I'm planting the spinach is no matter if I've bought starts or if I've started from seed later in the season, every year my spinach seems to bolt before I get a significant harvest. And so... This is just an effort today. We're gonna start them now and see if I can set them out a little earlier and more established and then get a, a harvest in before the weather turns warmer in May. So I've got Gracie labeling exactly what she planted there. Just like with my meal planning and inventories with food, I have to be very um, detailed and organized with my garden planning. So every year I keep a gardening journal and in it, I keep records of exactly what types of seeds I planted, when I planted them. And then if I have a year where something didn't go well, I know when I planted that so I don't repeat that mistake. And if something did well, I want to know what exactly I did and what I planted. So that's what I'm doing there is writing it down. So let me show you my gardening journal. It's another Erin Condren journal. I wanted one that was pretty and durable. And in the front, I have a kind of a master to-do list of what I need to do to get the garden prepped. And whew, it's about to get busy around here. <laughs> this page shows companion plants, things I should and shouldn't plant together when I'm planning out my garden space. And then I have a couple blank pages for that planning. And then here is my calendar in which I write what date I start every single little plant I'm going to start. Um, it shows the numbers over here. This is nine weeks out from my plant out date, eight weeks out, and so forth. And that just shows you because each seed packet will show you on the back how many weeks before your last frost you should plant those seeds. And so I just write my plant out date and then I count backwards and, and put that information in. So a detailed garden journal is essential each year. This just helps you stay organized and helps you remember exactly what you did. So I'll take you along and kind of show you more of the planning we're doing as garden season continues to advance. So here's my grow light setup. I keep it right by the wood stove because this is the warmest place in my house and some seeds require heat to germinate. And in lieu of using something like a heat mat, I just keep it right by the wood stove and then they stay plenty warm. And then the kids kind of take turns. They usually fight over every day who gets to help me water the plants. So that's nice. I don't typically have to do that myself. They do it for me. So let me show you, here are my little baby pepper plants that are growing. I don't grow a lot of peppers, but um, we just did two little trays. Now I have poor germination here on my banana peppers. The seeds were a little over two years old, so I'm gonna need to reseed those this week. That's in the plan. But everything else seems to be coming up and we're looking forward to that this year. And hopefully our onions will come up this week and it's just so exciting to have green in the house. I can't wait for gardening season. Gracie was feeling particularly helpful that day. Not only did she want to help me garden, but she wants to make energy bites for lunch. So she is taking our dates and taking the pits out of them. She's gonna use dates and cashew pieces 
and some shredded coconut, some cacao powder, and then of course she wanted to add some white chocolate chips. <laughs> and she's also going to add some sunflower seed butter later, but she's just getting all of that into the food processor and then she's going to pulse that all together until it makes an energy bite. So no measurements. I just let her add what she wants. And then when you make them this way, you just have to learn how to adjust. If it's too dry, you add a little more of something wet. If it's too wet, you need to add a little more of something dry. You can't really mess it up. So just a fun way to let her experiment and do whatever she wants here in the kitchen. I have to be very intentional about using up these dates because apart from the energy bites, we don't really use them for much. Sometimes I'll sweeten my homemade milk with them, um, but otherwise I, I really need to start working through those dates that we have that big box. I keep it in the um, fridge to keep them good so that they don't go too hard and they don't start to mold. And this is our last jar of some butter. So we timed that pretty perfectly there. We ran out just as the pantry challenge was ending, but I, I would like, I would feel more comfortable if I kept a little more sun butter in the house in the future because it definitely is a staple here, especially on days where I just want an easy meal like a sun butter sandwich with jelly or something like that. So here is what her little lunch that she put together looked like. She made the energy bites and she had some carrot slices from our storage carrots and some apple slices from the fridge. And then I had made some homemade jello. I've shown you this in previous videos. That's just made with Concord grape juice. That is what we're having. And then those lemon slices that I put in the freeze dryer the day before were finally done. You can see they turn out perfectly dried. You can take the center out. And if I crumble that, that can become like a lemon powder that I turn into lemonade. And then the rind of the lemon can also be used. There's nutrition in that. So we can powder that up and then we would just have like a lemon rind powder if we wanted to do that. So for now, I'm just gonna store them whole the way they are to save time. But if I ever wanted to separate the rind from the insides of the lemon, I could definitely do that. So let me show you how this would rehydrate. So all you do is just simply add a little bit of water to your lemon slice. And then that will just simply turn into a normal lemon slice. It rehydrates. Freeze drying causes it to rehydrate instantly. It's a little different than dehydrated food. So then I have a nice wet lemon slice. And then I store these to use when we cook fish and things and grill them. Sometimes I like to put a lemon slice on top. We'll just throw some of these lemon slices into a batch of homemade iced tea or lemonade. Or as I mentioned, I can even powder them down and make a lemon juice out of them so it's a really nice thing to have on the pantry shelves I put some of these in mylar and some of them I just put in a jar like this and set on the pantry shelf to be used in the future so loving the freeze dryer still if you want to learn more check the link in the description all right another day another breakfast I'm using my normal pancake recipe here and I'm feeling kind of tired and not wanting to flip pancakes this morning so we are going to do a big baked pancake once again we are using hard red wheat because that is what I had ground up for now and my helper here is adamant that he is the one that mixes this so he's going to cry if I don't let him <laughs> I gotta let him get his fill of the fun uh, before I get it all mixed together but anyways we'll get that mixed and then we're just going to pour this into a 9 by 13 baking dish that was greased and then I'm just going to bake this on the oven on 350 until the center of that cooks up because that saves me the time of flipping pancakes. And then after it's baked, this is what it looks like. Super simple breakfast. It tastes just like a pancake and the kids love it the same. We drizzle it with maple syrup and eat it in a bowl. And they're having it today with our frozen blueberries that we're still trying to eat through in storage. And I think the baby enjoyed it. He needed a little bath after this meal. So you always know if his bowl is empty, it was a good breakfast. Skipping ahead to yet another breakfast, we're going to make some polenta for breakfast. This is just ground cornmeal. And for every four cups of water I use, I use one cup of cornmeal. And we tripled this for our family this morning. I'm going to bring the water to a boil and slowly add that. I'll show you in a second, but also have to make a breakfast casserole. You guys know, and we are out of um, fresh potatoes, so we're using up canned right now. 
I've got a mix of water glassed and fresh eggs. And then I am just going to smear the bottom of this pie dish with a little bit of bacon grease so that my potatoes don't stick. And then I'm just gonna drain the potatoes and smash them into the bottom of that pie dish. And that is what we will use for our potatoes today. And then top them with those scrambled eggs. And I salted the top and we're just gonna bake that in the oven. And by the time I got that ready, my water was now boiling or close to boiling. We are gonna use a whisk and then I'm just gonna slowly add a little bit of cornmeal at a time and whisk it around. And then this is gonna thicken up and make our polenta, also known as cornmeal mush. So there, as you can see, it really starts to thicken up. It almost kind of congeals and makes like a gelatinous texture. It is really yummy. So it's a great way to use up our corn. This was whole corn that we had ground down into cornmeal. and I'm trying to use up as much corn as possible to cycle through these grains before they go bad. So this was a great way to use it up for a breakfast. So that's what our little casserole looked like with the canned potatoes, really delicious. And then I served the cornmeal mush with just a little bit of maple syrup uh, over top. Remember that wasn't sweetened at all. So that maple syrup will make it edible. All right guys, after two months of no grocery shopping, we decided today is the day that we're gonna break the Three Rivers Pantry Challenge in preparation for Miss Elizabeth back here's ninth birthday. We had said that we would go to the grocery store if we needed to get anything special for a child's birthday meal during the challenge. And since her birthday is tomorrow, we figure why not go ahead and um, go to the store and do our grocery shopping to, you know, to save us doing two trips. You know, it just made more sense to go ahead since we were already going to the store to do our big grocery thing. So we are planning today to go to Aldi we're going to go to Walmart and we're going to go to Sam's Club and that should be probably half of our grocery budget we'll spend uh, for the month. The other half will be from Azure Standard and I won't place that order until March 1st and won't pick up that order until the second week of March. But I've made a little list here of the things that we have run out of or that we're really low on that I would like to replace. I also, there are a couple things on here that my husband <laughs> really wanted me to get. Um, just as a treat to have in the house now and so we're ready to do it are you girls excited to have some fun groceries in the yeah. house it's yeah fun. yep so it's time we're ready after two months so we are gonna head out go ahead and hit up these stores and then we'll show you what we got when we get back we we had an ice storm last night and Adam's actually off work today because the campus is closed so I have my gentleman here helping to Get the windshield scraped. All right, so while we were at Walmart, I wanted to check out the canning supply situation. And it looks like there's a lot of ball lids in stock. This is sort of new for me. Two months ago, the last time I had been at Walmart in late or early December, the lids were still kind of out of stock. So it looks like they've remedied that situation, but they're extremely expensive. And that's why I'm switching to the Four Jars brand. They're much more affordable. I can't wait for canning supplies to get back to pre-pandemic level. Um, they're just much more expensive than they used to be. So, all right, let's finish our grocery shopping and I'll show you what we got. Our first stop of the trip was to Aldi. And I'm going to show you everything we got from there. I'll start down here at this end. So... This was a little treat. The children were with me and of course they're going to want some treats after two months of not having anything like this in the house. So they picked out some little fruit flavored snacks. Those would be fun for a day when we leave the house and I want to pack little lunches for them. So I got some of those. And then normally I get my ketchup from Azure Standard, but when I was pricing things out, I noticed that um, the Azure ketchup had really, the organic kind that I get had really jumped up in price. And this Aldi brand organic ketchup was nearly half the price. And so I think this is what I'm gonna to switch to buying instead of what I had been getting through Azure Standard. So I went ahead and got 10 of these because we are completely out of ketchup and I like to have that in stock because my children eat ketchup like it's soup or something. <laughs> we go through a lot of it. And then of course we were really missing bananas. My kids love bananas as a snack. We like them in smoothies. And so I got um, six little bunches of bananas and that will maybe last us a week and a half 
And then after that, we just go banana list for the rest of the month. And then at the beginning of next month's grocery tip, I'll buy more bananas. And then Gabriel particularly loves avocados. So I made sure to get him some avocados to have on his tacos this week or even salads. He'll slice up avocado and put it on that. I got two cabbages and we'll just either make some sauerkraut or I'll chop those up for a meal. I got two bags of frozen green beans. We'll use about two bags for one meal. So that's just one meal's worth of green beans. And then I got four bags of the mixed vegetables. I use those in pot pies and things. And so that'll get us through probably two meals of pot pie if we wanna make that. And then we did not get any strawberries to harvest um, or preserve last year for winter. We grow strawberries for fresh eating, but we go to a local farm to buy in bulk. And we had a late freeze that killed all of the strawberry blossoms at our local farm. So we had none that we had put in storage and we are missing strawberries a lot. And so I thought I would just get a bag so we could add some um, to smoothies um, this month. Some Braunschweiger, Adam loves this on crackers as do the children. So I got that for Adam. He will be a happy camper. And then of course, some lunch meat. And this is kind of junky lunch meat, nothing really that healthy for you, although it is nitrate free. But I buy this kind because of the packaging. I enjoy these little containers and use those to store my frozen berries and things in during preserving season. So if I'm gonna buy lunch meat for the family, why not buy something that comes in a container that will be reused instead of wasted and thrown away. So that is why I got that. That will make a very, we use about one container per meal. So that's three lunches. <laughs> and then I got six cans of canned salmon and we use these for salmon patties or salmon salad. And I am really trying to up the amount of canned salmon that I eat because as you can see on the back, it is extremely high in vitamin D and I recently found out I'm pretty vitamin D deficient. And so this is a great way for me to get that as well as some calcium, which we struggle um, with calcium as a dairy-free family. So trying to add way more canned salmon to our diet because that is just a great food option for us. And then same with other canned meats. My boys and Adam love sardines. They just eat these as a snack straight out of the can. And we have probably 20 cans in storage, but I always pick some up every time I go to Aldi because they like those. And then just to have in um, storage for a rainy day when I don't want to make taco shells, just two boxes of taco shells for our Taco Tuesdays. And nothing fancy about these. I'm sure it's full of GMO corn, but you know what? It's a convenience food that I like to have on hand. This is Adam's espresso that he has every morning before he goes to work. I just buy that. It's not, nothing fancy as well, but it gets the job done. All right, and then the kids talked me into this one. The girls wanted some apple juice, and they twisted my arm, and I said, sure, you guys can have some apple juice as a treat. So we got some of that. We have been missing chips and salsa a lot. While I do have some home canned salsa, we don't really prefer the texture of my home canned salsa for eating with chips. I tend to buy salsa for that. So we got five jars of that. And then these are purely convenience food items. There are days when I don't want to bake bread or I don't want to make hamburger buns. And we struggle to find breads that don't have milk in them. Most brands have milk. And so Aldi bread does not have milk. So when I go, I just buy a couple packages just to have in the house for a rainy day if maybe mom's sick and she doesn't want to bake. So that is why we got that. And this is everything that I got from Aldi. Now let me show you Walmart. All right, so from Walmart, uh, here is everything I got. I had spent about $90 at Aldi and I spent about $100 at Walmart on this stuff. So I started, um, the kids, as I mentioned, don't eat dried cereal that often, but when they do, this is their favorite brand, this Kashi brand cereal. And one breakfast, we will use two boxes for a breakfast. So I'll just make homemade cashew milk and they'll eat with this with it. And these are cereals that are a little bit healthier in my opinion, so I don't mind giving these to them just for a day when I don't feel like making breakfast. So it's a convenience food and I enjoy having that on hand and we can only find those at Walmart. So I go there kind of specifically to get those. Now I normally buy my pre-ground flour from Azure Standard in a big 50 pound bag, 
but since we're not making um, that order for another couple of weeks, I needed to buy some for David. He prefers to have a pre-ground all-purpose flour to do his baking experiments. It's much easier for him to bake with this versus the freshly ground flour that he has to sift. And so I just wanted to have some on hand for him here in the coming weeks instead of waiting for our Azure Standard order. And so we got him four little packages of that flour, and that should keep him happy. And then for me, I like to keep a couple little packages of a gluten-free one-to-one baking flour, not just for me, but my sister has celiac disease. I don't trust any of my home ground flours because we do use wheat berries. There could be cross-contamination in our grain mill. So if I'm going to bake for her, I need to have this in my house. And then sometimes that's nice. David will bake me gluten-free treats if I have this flour in the house for him to use. So I was grateful to get that in the house. That will be a blessing. One day I hope to learn to grow my own mushrooms. Um, it's a goal, maybe for this year. But in the meantime, I need to buy my mushrooms. So I bought a little thing of Baby Bella mushrooms and a little thing of white mushrooms. And we will use these as pizza toppings. Um, we also chop them up and put them in salads or in our pasta sauces. Um, we've been missing mushrooms for sure. And then you guys know I, I was ran out of my coconut aminos and was missing it. Normally, I also buy these in much bigger containers in bulk and get a better price at Azure Standard. But since I was desperate to get some back in the house, I just bought a little bottle at Walmart. I was willing to pay a little extra just to get some in the house. So that is for me. I can't have soy. So that is what I use on my rice when we make rice dishes. But Adam likes soy sauce, and this is the brand that he likes. And we just ran out last week, so I got him some of that. And then as I mentioned, we were out of some butter and I just wanted to get one little jar in the house while I wait to place my Azure order. I typically buy my sun butter in nine pound buckets, but this will be enough to just kind of get us through the next week in case I want to make a meal of sun butter sandwiches or we want to make some energy bites or something like that. This will be enough to get us through. So we really like the flavor of this brand best but we get better prices on other brands um, at Azure, so we typically buy those. Okay, something else we ran out of last month that I've been missing is black pepper. We had peppercorns to use for some things, but I wanted some ground pepper. And then this was an impulse purchase. Grace and Elizabeth wanted to have these for Elizabeth's birthday cake, and I let them pick out whatever sprinkles they wanted because they were being such wonderful girls with me during our shopping so they wanted a unicorn cake for elizabeth's birthday so david will bake that cake for us and then that is what he can decorate it with and that was the candle that she chose for her cake so that'll be really cute then as i mentioned we love canned fish and we are out of anchovies we can typically go through one to two cans of anchovies in a week so i just got some walmart is the only place um, locally that carries anchovies they don't carry them at Aldi um, or Sam's Club or anywhere like that. That So whenever I go to Walmart, I make sure to just grab a stack of anchovies and I get them in the house. Canned fish is great for you when you can't have calcium in dairy sources. You can get it from your canned fish. And Okay, guys, and this is all for Adam. You know, there was a time in my life where I tried to control what my husband ate because I maybe didn't approve of some of his food choices or think that they were particularly healthy for him. And that definitely caused some strain in our marriage. I learned that he's an adult that can make his own decisions and I can't control what he eats. And so when he asks for these foods, I buy them for him because I want to be a happy wife and have a happy marriage. And you know what? Adam was a trooper. He did really well when he was home on this food, um, this pantry challenge. He didn't whine about not having things like this in the house. And so when he requested these, when I was making my grocery list, I got them for him. So we keep these. These are not something that um, the kids eat because obviously one bag of these wouldn't go very far with the seven children. But these are things that I keep on hand for Adam to have as snacks. So that is our Walmart run. Now let's talk about Sam's Club. I spent about $100 too at Sam's Club. I spent a little more than that, but some of that was like toilet paper and other things that we needed to get in the house. But on food, I spent about $100. And let me show you what that was. A lot of people talk about Costco and how wonderful it is, and I really wish we had a Costco close. I think the closest one to us is about an hour and a half away, So, but we have a Sam's Club pretty close by, so we just make do with that. 
So first I had to get some vanilla extract in the house. We ran out uh, several weeks ago. I do make my own homemade vanilla extract, but because David has been baking so much more, he's going through my vanilla extract quite more quickly than I did typically when I was just doing the baking. I think he sneaks a little extra in his recipes, which is fine. I just need to make more of my homemade stuff in the future, but it takes a while for that to be done. So in the meantime, I bought some vanilla extract and wow, the price of vanilla has really increased since the last time I bought some. So that hopefully will last a while. This is something that I bought for Gabe as a treat. Gabe loves these veggie straws. And, you know, as far as potato chips go, they're not terrible. There's some questionable ingredients in there, but I would much rather have the kids eat these than some other options. And so, you know what? You pick your battles, and this is a great option for a day where we're packing a lunch or something to go somewhere. So I bought a bag of those from Sam's Club. You get a decent price on those there. And then speaking of chips, we also get our tortilla chips from Sam's Club in bulk. And this is something that we were definitely missing over the last couple months. We had run out of these. And yes, I can make my own tortilla chips, and I often do that. But I also didn't have masa flour in the house in order to make my tortilla chips either. So we're very grateful to finally have tortilla chips in the house. We'll eat these with the salsa that we got from Aldi. And then this was just something new, kind of an impulse buy. I got this chicken apple sausage. I don't know if you guys know about this, if I had mentioned this before, but we had three pigs um, that a friend raised that we had had butchered, and we had bratwursts that were made from that meat, and we had come to find out after cutting into some bratwursts the first time I made them that the butcher had accidentally contaminated them with cheese. He apparently puts cheese in his cheddar brats and hadn't cleaned the machine out, and then our bratwurst got contaminated with cheese, so we had to give all of that away. So we have definitely been missing brats and um, and hot dogs and things like that. So when I saw these chicken apple smoked sausages, I thought I would give them a try. They are not the same as a brat, but the ingredients didn't seem terrible, and it seemed like something that the family would like. So I went ahead and bought a package of those, and wow, meat prices are also... I don't buy meat often, and meat is much more expensive than it was a couple months ago. Gabriel loves cauliflower and has asked me to grow more in my garden this year, and I'm definitely going to do that. But in the meantime, I just got a head of cauliflower. I'm going to cook that up for him this week. And then I always buy my distilled white vinegar from Sam's Club. You get a great price there. We use this in the kitchen. We also use it for our cleaning. This is one of my main cleaning supplies, so I always want to keep this in stock and not run out of it. We got some olives. These are a frequent pizza topping for my children, and they also, my kids love to snack on olives. And then also olive oil. You guys know I ran out of this and I was missing it. So we do a lot of baking with olive oil. This is a replacer for butter. In any recipe that calls for melted butter, this is typically what I will use in the recipe. Now, I do not like um, virgin olive oil in my recipes. It has too strong of a flavor. But this pure olive oil that is not extra virgin has a much milder flavor. As you can see, it even says it on the label there, mild flavor. So I always want to get pure olive oil that's not extra virgin. The problem is you can never find it organic anywhere. In fact, it's really just hard in general to find pure olive oil most places. Most people want extra virgin olive oil. But uh, this is what I like to get. Azure only offers extra virgin olive oil in bulk, and so Sam's Club is the best place for me to get my olive oil. And then I wanted to get some grapes for the kids. That will be gone very quickly. We'll go through that in one sitting with these guys, but it was just a treat for the kids. And then as you know, we were wanting some lettuce after not having it in a while. And this, look, this is grown in Ohio. That's exciting. Yay, Ohio. <laughs> but this, um, we went ahead and got two containers of this spring mix and I got one container of spinach and then these will be used for salads here in the next couple weeks really looking forward to salads so that's probably one thing that we miss the most and I'm going to work on remedying for future pantry challenges and then I went ahead and got two bags of broccoli we go through about one full bag per meal so that will last us two meals this month Broccoli is another important uh, food for us as a dairy-free family. It's pretty high in calcium as far as vegetables go. 
So we do try to eat as much broccoli as possible. You saw me eat a lot of frozen broccoli through the pantry challenge. Now we can have some raw. And then the girls begged me for some pickles. They were with me. They love pickles. I typically like to buy my pickles without the yellow food dye in them, but this is all they have at Sam's Club. And I really like to get my pickles in these glass jars because I can reuse them in my pantry. So we went ahead and got that. And then, of course, a container of red grape tomatoes. We love these on our salads. So that is a wonderful treat. And that is what we got at Sam's Club. We spent about $100. All right, guys, that was my first grocery run. Those are the things that we really wanted to get in the house and we're kind of missing after two months of no grocery shopping. You'll notice that a lot of those foods were just simply convenience items because by this point, for two straight months, I have been cooking meals from scratch, breakfast, lunch, and dinner every single day. My only breaks are usually on Wednesday or Thursday night. David will make pizza for me, and then he'll usually on Saturday mornings handle breakfast by making a biscotti and, and something else for the family. But other than that, I've been cooking nonstop, and I am ready for a break. So grocery shopping for me, half of it is restocking foods that we need in the house, and that shopping is done through Azure Standard, and I'll show you that haul in a future video. But a lot of the grocery store shopping that we do is just simply convenience foods. There are a lot of things that we could do without, but we just like to have them on hand because there are days where maybe homeschool lessons are going to take a little bit longer and I don't want to make a lunch from scratch. I want to just have some lunch meat on hand to throw together some sandwiches really quickly. Or maybe there's a morning on the, um, on the weekend where I'm not feeling 100% and I don't want to cook a big breakfast from scratch. And so it's nice to just have a couple boxes of cereal in the house um, for those occasions. So really that's what the grocery store is uh, for us. And then our main paint pantry staples that I need to have in the house, like wheat berries and like um, baking supplies and, and other things like that, those I buy in bulk to get really good prices from Azure Standard. So um, a lot of our eating doesn't really look much different throughout the rest of the year. It's just that peppered throughout the month, there will be days where maybe I don't cook from scratch and I rely on some of those convenience foods because, you know, I'm a busy mom and I need a break sometimes. <laughs> Um, so let's go ahead and talk about what I learned this year in 2022 doing this challenge. If that interests you, stick around here. I'm going to talk about it for a minute. Okay, guys, so here is how the challenge went for me this year. And I had a comment on Instagram saying that, you know, previous year's challenges seemed to be more interesting because I had to scrape by a lot more and come up with more creative alternatives for meals. And that's really true. This year might have been a lot more boring to watch because every year I do this challenge, um, I'm more and more prepared. And that is one of the goals of the challenge. Um, if you do it, the challenge, the first year, and you realize, you know what, I ran out of cooking vats very early on in the challenge, well, you know that next year that's something that you need to prioritize keeping stocked up in your house and do a better job. Um, other things, I ran out of baking supplies in previous years, and maybe I didn't have yeast to make bread, or I didn't have um, baking powder to make a lot of my baked goods. Well, I learned that lesson the hard way in previous years, and now I make sure I have bulk quantities of those items in the house. So every year you get better at that. Things that we did run out of this year that I am kind of mad at myself about, <laughs> definitely the olive oil. That was a big mistake on my part, and it was an unnecessary mistake to make because I would have had enough olive oil to last another month had I been disciplined about using things like the beef tallow that we have in our overflow fridge to do our cooking and just save the olive oil for my baking and things like um, making homemade mayonnaise and stuff. So that's a mistake I won't make in the future. I'm definitely going to be more diligent about using up my beef tallow. It isn't a convenient fat to use for cooking all of the time, which is why I default to the olive oil but I need to use it because I don't want to run out of, of olive oil in the future. Um, other things that we learned this year, every year I say that I'm going to preserve more green vegetables or I'm going to find a way to grow greens through the winter. And there have been years in the past where I have successfully done that. I have made a straw bale cold frame out in our garden and I grew mustard greens and kale and even lettuce through the majority of the winter in previous years. And that worked wonderfully. But 
There are some times in the late summer and early fall when I need to get those seeds planted and ready to go where I just don't have the energy or I forget to do it and then it's too late because you can't just do that last minute in a cold frame. And that was the case last year because I had other things going on in my life, health challenges going on in the fall where I didn't get that set up. I didn't even plant a fall garden last year and fall garden is typically when I would get most of my brassicas and greens that I would preserve for the year. So that's a big mistake. I will not make that again. It's a huge goal. And while I probably won't get my dream greenhouse built this year because we're prioritizing other projects, I will definitely have cold frames in place and we'll find a way to have those fresh greens next year. So that's something I learned and um, moving forward we will do. But other things I learned, you know, every year my family grows in size, it seems like, and in appetites. I have young children that are growing and each year they're eating more and more. And so what I love about this pantry challenge is that it gives me an opportunity to fully understand how much food we go through in a month. And I was able to see that, you know, I've realized that we can easily go through 50 pounds of fresh potatoes in one month in our house. That's easy, we could definitely eat more, but that's kind of a minimum of what I need to have in the house. We went through a little over 100 pounds of fresh potatoes during this challenge. And so that is information that I will use this year. If I wanna grow my own potatoes, then I know that I'm gonna need at least 600 pounds of potatoes harvested to get me through a whole year. Um, if I don't have the space, once I realize, you know, 600 pounds of potatoes, I look up how many potatoes I can grow per square foot in a garden. And if I realize, you know what, I don't want to allocate that much garden space to that, then I know that come fall when um, it's harvest season for other farmers that do grow potatoes and sell them, then I need to purchase enough to get me through. And it's good to have that information. I learned that we can easily go through 50 pounds of pre-ground flour in a month with all of the, the baking that David has been doing. And I can easily go through about 25 pounds of wheat berries just for baking that doesn't include bread. If I'm making my own bread, then I easily need another 25 pounds of hard wheat berries. So that's good information to have. And I wouldn't know those exact numbers if I didn't do something like a pantry challenge where I was having to eat exclusively from this food. And so all of these figures, you know, I, I have I figured that out for most of the food that we've eaten, how much we went through during this pantry challenge. And if that's something that interests you guys, um, if you wanna know for a family of nine of, of our size with kids our ages, exactly how much food we went through, let me know. And that's something I could detail maybe in another video. But I have all of that information now and I'm heading into gardening season, which is such a blessing because now I can plan accordingly. And that's why I do this challenge in January and February because I wanna have that information. And um, yeah, so that's a blessing that came out of this. Of course, the money is a main motivator for doing this. And as you know, we spend between 700 to $800 now with inflation per month in groceries. And so by not buying groceries for two months, we saved up to $1,600. That's huge for our family. And what we can do now that the growing season has come is just kind of um, use that money as an investment in this year's growing season. You know, that's more animals maybe that we can purchase. It's more fencing that we can put up with that money to grow even more food. And um, that's wonderful. I've mentioned before that we don't adjust the grocery budget leading up to the challenge or after the challenge. So even though we depleted some food here during the pantry challenge, I'm not gonna spend more here in March to make up for what we ate because that would defeat the purpose of the challenge. I just move ahead with my same grocery budget and we restock what we used up throughout the year, either by growing it ourselves and um, preserving it or by purchasing it in bulk through Azure Standard and by next year, once winter hits, after the growing season, we'll be just as prepared to do this again. So that is a huge blessing. I mentioned in a previous video, I lost five pounds over the course of the last two months and it stayed off. And that is wonderful because I, I've been struggling to lose the baby weight since I had Benjamin. You know, part of that weight loss could be attributed to finally weaning him in the end of December. So my body is finally letting me lose some of that weight. But a lot of it too is just my eating habits change. When you're forced to just eat from what you have in the house, 
you don't have those convenience foods on hand, the snacky foods that you normally, you know, it's late at night and you go start looking through the cupboards and you're like, oh, this sounds good to eat because I'm bored. Well, during a pantry time, I don't have that stuff. If I want to eat something, I basically have to make it from scratch and that's a lot of effort. And if it's at the end of the day, I just wasn't snacking and I wasn't starving. <laughs> We're eating enough during our meals. So it was just a good way to get my body back into the habit of just eating what I need to eat and not um, indulging in too much. So I'm grateful to start the year off kind of um, with my body reset in that way. That's a huge blessing of the challenge. Gratefulness is a huge blessing that, that came out of this. You know, every year that I do this, um, I just think about how I'm so blessed to live in a day and age where I have access to grocery stores. And if I run out of an item, I can hop into a car in the middle of winter and stay warm on my drive to the grocery store, get food, bring it home and feed that to my family. I think of people around the world that that is not their reality right now. I think of my ancestors, my great, great grandmothers that did not have that option what they had on hand, what they grew, what they preserved, that is all they had to eat. And just coming out of this and living that way, maybe for a couple months, just makes me grateful that I don't have to live that way. And so I can go to the grocery store as I did and showed you what I purchased and buy some convenient foods to make my life easier. And I truly am grateful. And I'm grateful that this pantry challenge produced that gratefulness in me. Um, and my children are grateful. You know, they um, participate in this challenge, as does my husband, although he gets to cheat a little bit when he, when he leaves the house. But, you know, my children were along for the ride on this too. And they know this happens every year and they're excited too because they know all of the benefits that come out of it. They know that we're going to save some money and they know that, um, you know, we're going to use up food. And we've talked about all the benefits of doing that. But um, there's there's gratefulness that comes out of them. When we do go back to the grocery store and they walk through the aisles of the grocery store and they see all of these options that are available to them, my girls, it just, I feel like it's a good experience for them um, to recognize that the abundance of food that is available to us as Americans living in this modern day and age, it is a huge blessing. And um, we shouldn't take it for granted. And doing something like this, I feel like, um, helps us not take it for granted. So, so many wonderful things came out of this challenge this year for us. I hope it was a blessing to you. Um, something that, a question that I, I get commonly, I even got before the challenge started. People asked me if I was worried at all about using up all of this food in light of current events and even in light of events that um, transpired here in the last week um, overseas with um, wars looming on the horizon and things like that, people have asked me if I regret using up all of this food. And to that, I have to say, no, I don't at all. Um, I mentioned before in previous videos um, the difference between homesteading and prepping. And I'm a homesteader. I have a homesteading mindset. And everything that I used up are things that, Lord willing, I will grow again this year. And if you've taken a peek at my pantry shelves <laughs> um, in, the, in the videos, even this week, they're not completely depleted. I could continue on this challenge if I wanted to just eat from what we have in the house. We could easily last three more months minimum if we wanted to. And then by the time those three months were up, we would be harvesting fresh food from our gardens. And that's the point of this. That is the point of having a homesteading mindset. You're not preparing in a traditional prepper, prepper way where you're just hoarding a bunch of food for a rainy day and being scared to use that because it would deplete your stores. I'm preserving food and preparing food every year so that I can use it up and make space for the food that I plan to prepare and preserve this year. That's the whole goal of living this lifestyle for me. So no, I don't regret doing what I did and using this up, it needed to happen or else I would have no space in my freezers and no space on my shelves to preserve what I plan to do this year. And guess what? If, heaven forbid, something crazy broke out, I have beef growing in my pastures. I have eggs abundantly, especially as spring hits here. Eggs, so many eggs we're not going to know what to do with coming out of hens. 
I have an incubator. I can hatch more chickens to raise for meat and more ducks to raise for meat. And I have a garden that can grow um, food. And then people say, well, what happens if it's a terrible year and your garden does poorly or your, your animals suffer some kind of disease or something where you don't have the harvest that you expect out of them? Well, to that I say, as a homesteader, I have other skill sets too. You know, my husband can hunt and he could hunt for our meat or I know how to forage for wild plants and berries and fruits and I have a yard full of dandelions that are going to grow no matter what happens. <laughs> there, we live in a world of abundance. It's just the, a mindset that you have to have. And so I don't live in fear. I know the Lord is my provider. He will give us our daily bread. He will give us our daily bread whether I prepare or not. <laughs> um, and so I guess that's my answer to that question. Um, live in wisdom, not in fear. Prepare accordingly. If the Lord is telling you not to do something like a pantry challenge because it isn't a good idea for your family, listen to the Spirit and do what it's asking of you. But don't let world events create an anxiety in you or a fear in you that doesn't come from the Lord. Um, you just You need to be in tune with the Spirit and it will tell you what you need to do for your family. That's what I did leading up to the challenge and I knew it was going to be okay for our family and I knew it was a wise thing for me to do to use this food up in order to make space for the next year um, so I don't have any regrets and I just I hope that you and your family aren't living in anxiety over current events my prayer for you is that you would hand that anxiety over to the Lord let him fill you with wisdom let him show you the best way to prepare your family and you're gonna be okay he provides he's faithful so all right, guys, um, that's, I guess, all I have to say about this, wrapping up the, the Three Rivers Challenge. I'm going to continue, obviously, with weekly videos, and it's going to be probably more of what I've been kind of showing you, just a mix of kitchen work that I'm doing for the week, if there's any new projects that I'm doing, um, any food preservation, whether it's canning or um, freeze-drying or whatever it is that we're doing. Um, a lot of gardening content coming up as we prepare for planting and maintaining the garden. Um, obviously homeschooling because that's a big part of our life and I would like to show you more of that side of what we do here and just life in general. So um, hopefully you've enjoyed this series of videos over the last couple of months. It's been really fun for me um, to create them for you. Thank you to everyone who has participated in this challenge. I have enjoyed watching all of your videos on the hashtag and just seeing how everybody else is inspiring and encouraging others. Um, and just thank you guys for watching. Uh, I appreciate you guys subscribing and liking my videos and, and just I'm grateful for this community here. So I hope you all have a blessed week. I'll see you next week, friends. Bye.